finds. And uh, I had a project of the day where I was trying to increment time. Basically, um, I could only send 500 emails at a time um, through Gmail and it would start blocking it. So I wanted to stagger my time by um, an hour in that example. And so um, this to me was voodoo because it's just confusing to add time at an hour because when you start getting over at the 12 p.m. and whatever, it gets really confusing to me. But um, Maestri has showed me how, in AutoHotKey, how easy it is to manipulate time, meaning I can add or subtract to it. And so um, first I've created a couple variables up here. Um, and this just, by the way, so single force can have it load once. This helps me just reload my script. And this is going to, a hotkey to trigger running the script. And it's going to dump it into this output window. Let me clear that real quickly here. Um, but I'm going to save the uh, the days, hour increment, minute increment. These are the things that, that's going to allow me to save it into a variable and then adjust um, in my script here to what I want it to be. Uh, so I'm just setting placeholders here. And then this is setting up my header row, which you'll see in my output window down here. Uh, and then, so first we store, a, a now is a variable built into auto hotkey, which will store the current time. And I'm gonna take a snapshot of that and store it here in time. And then, even though the very first time through, um, these actually won't have the day offset. Notice this is day offset, not days increment, right? So this is actually gonna be blank. So the first time through, it's gonna be the current time because I didn't add anything to it. Uh, and then this one here, um, after it, this this will add it all up, um, it's going to add on the day offset, which gets set down here, right? This is where the day offset is going to equal, um, it's going to add the day increment to it um, and keep adding to it. And that's how it's going to increment, keep incrementing up whatever I put up in here. Um, this is just going to format the time into a, a, a much easier to read timestamp. You know what? I don't need the minutes and seconds. I think I can just get rid of this because um, we're not adjusting seconds or um, the AM. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me rephrase that because the AM PM, I want to show how when we do it by an hour, it's going to increment that um, the AM PM part. Uh, so, but I think I can get rid of, I think this will still work. So let me try that. And uh, so anyway, that's just going to format my new timestamp. Um, and then this, just because I want to show as it loops over them, I'm stuffing this all into a new times variable. So this basically means append the next thing to it. And I'm going to put, this is what the, the offset value was, the hour for the day, for the hour, for the minute, and then the actual new time that got calculated, uh, and then put in a, a new line feed um, at the end of it, which, which will have it at the beginning. Um, and then here is where I actually do some math. So I'm going to add to the days offset. I'm going to increment my by my days. So if this is 10, this would be adding 10. If it's 1, if... If the days is one and add one, whatever, right? And the hours and the minutes, this is where all the math happens. And then this is just my function that outputs to this output window. So first off, I'm not, I have, these are all set to zero. Let me save, reload, and launch. And you'll see here, so here again, these are blank, right? The first run through, uh, they were they were not even set. So they're not even zero, right? And it's I'm doing this at 712 on June 1st. 7, 12, and notice there's no incrementing. But if I change the days increment to one, save, reload, and launch, notice it goes up on the days, right? The times are all staying the same, but the days are going up. And if I actually made this, um, let's say 60, actually, no, I don't want that. Let's say three, um, it's gonna step by it three days. And so that, I got 11, will be right at probably the beginning of July here. Um, yeah, so we made it up to, but not on, the beginning of July. So each, in stepping by three days, let's make it four, so I step into July. Right, so it's that easy to add days. Let's go back to one, just because it's easy. And hours, we're going to increment by um, one first, to make it simple. So it's, we're starting at 7.13, and then 8.13, and 9.13. And notice here, this is what I love, right? So after the 11.13, then it switches to PM for me. And this is what I would need for setting my, what in the world is that, the, a fuse in Outlook to tell it to deploy at a certain time. Um, that's what allows me to do that. And so let's say I'm going to do that by two hours. And it's stepping by two, let's say by um, 12. And notice 12 is going to make it um, actually change the days, right? Because I'm stepping by 12 hours, and so it's going AM, PM, but notice the days. Let me change this back to zero to make it a little easier to follow. 
So it's still changing the days, right? Because I got the 7.14 and then a.m. and then 7.14 p.m. and then the next day, right? Because I'm stepping by 12 hours. Of course, if I change this 24, that'd be like one day. Um, and then let's just go ahead and let's go back to one and one and let's increment the minutes by one. And so you'll see here, now each of those things are incremented by um, one day, one hour, one minute. Um, or if I want to do uh, 20 minutes, right, it will it'll control for it. So it's just a super easy way to quote unquote add time, right? You're, you're doing math on time, but keeping it in that timestamp so it's not a crazy number, um, which if I tried to add 70 minutes or let's say 60 minutes to um, 1250 um, that would of course end up into one something but if I did just math on it then it wouldn't be so um, anyway that's it I hope that helps thanks